So there are three big mechanisms. We take over habitats, we knock off the competition, and then we overconsume. And all of these things are accelerating the rates at which human beings are competitively displacing other species from the planet. And uh, someday we may well rue the consequences of this. We become so numerous and so powerful that we're threatening the existence of, of all other life forms. We desperately need to evolve a sustainable way of life that's not based on fossil fuels. The United States in the 1950s was the world's largest producer of petroleum. The United States in the 1950s had the world's largest known reserves of petroleum. And the United States was on a, a rise. We had seen about 60 or 70 years of continuous exponential growth in the amount of oil being extracted in the United States. But in 1956, King Hopper, then a petroleum geologist with Shell Oil, predicted that the United States would peak in its oil production by 1970. That was only 15 years away. So we'd seen almost three quarters of a century of, of continuous increase in oil production. The country was on an exponential roll. How could anyone imagine this could all come to a glittering end in just 15 years? And so this prediction was vilified. I went to the Shell Research Lab and there met M. K. Hubbard, who had just predicted that the U.S. oil production would peak in the early 1970s. Hubbard printed this prediction and gave it orally as a talk, and he claimed later that down to 15 minutes before he went on the platform, the head office of Shell Oil was still on the phone saying, don't do it, don't do it. Well, he did it, and for a while, of course, we didn't know it was coming true. And in 1970, when it did happen, we still didn't know. You kind of see that in the rearview mirror. But what we did learn in 1972 was that the Texas Railroad Commission announced production rationing is off in Texas. Well, that meant, uh-oh, the United States has no unused production capacity, and then we were dependent on exports, and I came home that evening and told my family, old Hubbard wasn't right, uh, we're in the suit now. As it turns out, he was dead on. U.S. oil production peaked in 1970 or 71, and it's been downhill ever since. Oil discoveries in the U.S. had peaked in the 1930s. As discoveries were constantly diminishing, M. King Hubbard realized that eventually production would diminish as well. It was only a matter of time. Worldwide oil discoveries have followed a pattern similar to discovery rates in the United States. World oil discoveries peaked in 1963, and this is not a particularly controversial uh, fact, although it's not widely discussed. Actual discoveries have been declining dramatically for the past 40 years.
currently the world uses about 84 million barrels of oil per day, so that's the, the world oil production capacity. Because a number of countries are past their all-time oil production peaks, that means that their oil production is constantly diminishing. Of the top 30 oil-producing countries in the world, which represent roughly 90% of the world's oil production, at least 15 have passed peak oil and therefore produce less oil each successive year. The United States passed peak production in the early 1970s. Today, the U.S. produces less than two-thirds of the daily volume it produced at its peak. Iran produces roughly one-third less than it did in its peak year of 1974. Kuwait produces roughly 30 percent less than its peak year of 1972. And Libya produces less than half of its peak year of 1970. Russia, Oman, Venezuela, Norway, and seven others have also passed their production peak. Between 2005 and 2010, we'll need about another 30 million barrels a day of new production capacity just to offset depletion. There's about 12 and a half million barrels a day of new production capacity headed our way over the next five years. Now clearly that's not going to be enough to make up for the 30 million barrels a day needed just to offset depletion. Nor the extra maybe 8 to 10 million barrels a day needed in order to meet growing demand. So we're going to hit a patch, probably around 2007, where supply is simply no longer going to be sufficient to meet demand. And that will probably coincide very closely with the world oil production peak. We've been following the peak oil debate very closely and our, our group of geologists is, uh, is very much involved. And our view is that it's not a resource problem, it's an investment problem. I have a long running battle with economists. They think if you show up the cashier's cage with a big stack of currency, God will put some more oil in the ground. The United States Geological Survey, called the USGS, estimates oil reserves for the United States and worldwide. It is on the data compiled by the USGS and analyzed by the Energy Information Administration that the U.S. government sets its energy policy around oil. One of the likely reasons the U.S. government has not taken steps to mitigate peak oil's impact is that the USGS believes that there is substantially more oil than others have estimated. 